Chrome OS? What the balls, Google? You think you can waltz into a market full of established operating systems, whip out your Linux variant with limited offline use, slap it into a bunch of inexpensive products made by third-party vendors, and expect people to buy that shiznit? Just a sec. What's that? People are buying them? Huh. There was, there was no one there. That was fake. Office 365. Get work done anytime, anywhere, and on any device. In addition to one terabyte of OneDrive storage, also receive 60 Skype World Minutes per month to over 60 countries. Chrome OS. It's Google's take on a very minimal web-centric operating system that they hope is going to take the affordable devices market by storm, and it's sort of already started to do that. The numbers on Chrome OS adoption have been kind of iffy, but at the end of 2013, Chromebooks had grabbed around 20% of all notebook sales. Now, I know this may be hard to grasp from a hardcore PC enthusiast's perspective. It has less than a fraction of the features and software that Windows or OS X or even Linux has. Its abilities are almost crippled without an internet connection, but to the average consumer, Chrome OS is great because of simple and intuitive user interfaces, very minimal maintenance, super fast boot and load times, and the main kicker, low price. What we've got here is a $300 Chromebook, a $200 Chrome box, and a $400 Chrome base, which is a Chrome OS all-in-one. I'm gonna do a quick rundown on what it's like to use Chrome OS, offline use and software, but first, Let's stop ignoring the device in front of me here. Now, Chromebooks make up the vast majority of Chrome OS devices, and the one we have here is the Acer C720P. I featured it in my back to school laptop video, as it is in a lot of best top 10 most good Chromebooks lists because of its excellent battery life and performance. It packs a 1.4 gigahertz Intel Celeron 2955U, four gigs of RAM, a 16 gig SSD, and an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 touch screen. You might be saying to yourself, those are super lame specs for a phone nowadays, let alone a laptop. But if you consider what you're going to use a Chromebook for, primarily web browsing, using Google Drive software and whatnot, they sort of make sense. Chrome OS was designed to run on less fancy hardware, and as a result, you still get very decent performance. Actually, there's a newer version of uh, the 720 that comes with an Intel Core i3 inside uh, without the touchscreen, although it is a bit more expensive. Now this right here is our Chrome box, the Asus CN60. You'll need to supply the peripherals to operate this, a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Uh, this particular model has the same CPU as the C720P, same amount of storage, but with two gigs of RAM and a lot more ports. Four USB 3.0 ports, two in the front, two in the back, uh, as well as Ethernet, HDMI, and DisplayPort, as well as an SD card reader on the side. Now this guy was pretty good at multitasking while driving a 1080p monitor when I was using it, but there's also another model that comes with a Core i3 and four gigs of RAM and can apparently drive up to 4K on monitors. For the record, I wouldn't do that, but, but hey, great info. For around 200 bucks, this is potentially a great device for a family computer that's mainly used for web browsing and watching videos. Now over here is the LG Chrome Base, the first and so far only one of its kind. It's so lonely. Again, very similar specs, an Intel Celeron 2955U with two gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of SSD storage, wrapped all up in a 21.5 inch 1080p IPS display. Interestingly, this machine also has an HDMI in port on the back, so you can switch between Chrome OS and another input just by pressing this touch button down here under the display. There's also one USB 3.0 port on the side next to the audio jack, three USB 2.0 ports in the back and an ethernet port as well. It also comes with this little wired keyboard and mouse. Now this is all fine, but what is it actually like to use Chrome OS? Well, have you used Google Chrome before? It's, it's like that. The OS is less of a stripped down version of Windows or OS X and more of a expanded Chrome browser. Its apps are pretty much all Chrome extensions, uh, except for the core Google apps like Hangouts or Google Keep, as well as the camera app and local files browser. Those are distinct apps. Speaking of the files browser, it does show your Google Drive at the top, highlighting that you're probably supposed to be connected to the web. But you do also have 16 gigs of storage, about nine gigs of which is actually usable. You can create different folders and drag and drop them pretty much like Windows or OS X. And you can open video and music files and play them with the built-in media player just like any other computer. 
Now, if you do take the plunge and go for Chrome OS, you're obviously giving up the massive world of full applications that run on Windows. However, most of the more popular software have analogs on Google. You got Drive for Office, Hangouts for Skype. Heck, there are even free photo editing apps like Pixlr that give Photoshop a run for its money. If you're already using Google's ecosystem for a lot of your work, like we in the office do, we do all our scripting on Google Drive and spreadsheets and everything, you're going to have a pretty good time using Chrome OS. Now, Chrome OS is built on Linux, just like Android, so why can't they just run Android apps on it? Funny you ask that, disembodied voice, because the day I started scripting this episode, Google announced it had started to bring Android apps to Chrome OS. They're starting with Vine, Evernote, Duolingo, and SightWords, but more are apparently on the way. Chrome OS is just starting to come into its own, and the addition of distinct Android apps is definitely going to help it along. Now, the OS is still in its fledgling stages, which is evidenced by some strange inconsistencies, like the fact that I couldn't get Chrome Remote Desktop to work between these things. It works fine to control other devices running Chrome, but you can't use it, not that I could figure out anyways, between Chromebooks and Chromebases and Chromeboxes. Heh. <laughs> but for the most part, if I expected a feature to work, it usually did. Now, of course, this is all a far, far, far cry away from approaching the utility of full-on Windows. And like I said, many of you see a Chromebook and literally can't think of anything more stupid! Gah, why?! But here's the deal. For the user that's less literate in the ways of computers, it's awesome. And it's not a Mac. Chrome OS devices boot in seconds, have Chrome's excellent security features, and are dirt cheap most of the time. Except for the Chromebook Pixel. That is inexplicably over 1300 bucks. I mean, it's supposed to be a concept device mostly, but just don't buy it, okay? Well, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Let me know in the comments, do you think Chrome OS is going to go anywhere? Is it the wannabe poser OS or the new Apple? Those are the two options. You can't say anything else. JK, say whatever. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.